Today's focus is chocolate. As I go through this tutorial, please follow along with your confections activity packet. The first thing we're going to talk about in regards to chocolate is its quality. There's four criteria that falls under the quality of chocolate, and that's appearance, smell, break, and texture. First off, the appearance, it should have a, chocolate should have a nice brown solid color. It should have no discoloration. Some chocolate will be a little glossy, some won't have any gloss at all. It just depends on the ratio of cocoa butter uh, to cocoa powder to liqueur, etc. The smell of the chocolate, it should just smell like chocolate. It should have a chocolatey smell without any other odors and it should not seem stale. When you break the chocolate, it should have a nice clean snap. It should not crumble. If it crumbles, usually it's a sign that it's expired and old. And you probably, you could eat it, you probably won't get sick, you could, but it's just not going to have that same chocolate melt in your mouth kind of quality that you're looking for. And then that moves me into my next um, criteria, last criteria, which is texture and chocolate should melt. As soon as you put it in your mouth, it should melt very quickly when you apply any form of heat. The next couple of slides is going to talk about the types of chocolate. There are several types of chocolate that we want you to be familiar with. The first one is unsweetened. Now the pictures are a little me messed up here, but in the bottom right hand corner, um, that is your unsweetened chocolate. Okay, this is an extremely bitter, bitter chocolate. So if you were to um, put this type of chocolate in your mouth, you're not going to like it because it's not going to have that yummy flavor that you're used to when you have chocolate. This is known, this unsweetened chocolate is usually used um, in baking. We've used it in Culinary Basics for brownies. Um, you've used it this semester for the turtle brownies. Uh, you can use it for various things, but it, it's really to give that chocolate flavor and then obviously in the recipe you'll add the other ingredients to make it taste better. Um, but unsweetened chocolate is chocolate liqueur without any sugar or milk, so that's why it's so bitter. And as you can write down on your sheet the uh, it has 53% cocoa butter and only 47% cocoa solid. So it, it's really pure out chocolate. Okay, it's going to have a great smell. Just it's not going to taste what you think it should taste like. The next type of chocolate, which is right up here in the corner, is the bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate. Now you can buy this in chocolate, uh, like chips chunks etc but often it's also used for baking so this is what it would look like if you were going to use it for baking um, this has 35 percent chocolate liqueur but it has additional cocoa butter and sugar and some other flavoring so it's going to be a little bit more tasty to your palate the next type of chocolate i want to talk about is called coverture i want you to say it with me coverture okay um, this is what it looks like. It looks like chocolate chips. They're a little bit bigger tablets. This is the highest quality chocolate. It contains at least 32% cocoa butter. Um, it's used by professionals because it's, it's great. Um, most professionals don't want to take a risk with using a cheap type of chocolate because it's, it's, sometimes it's very hard to work with and it doesn't look as nice um, after it's been cooled. So Coverture is going to have that higher uh, quality um, and, and just makes the finished product look better. It's very glossy um, and it works great on confections and pastries. So usually you're not going to find Coverture at like a local grocery store. You're going to order it from a specialty grocery store or a specialty chocolate company. Most Coverture is going to be manufactured in Belgium. Moving on, um, the next type of chocolate is the milk chocolate, and that's right up here, here um, the first picture. And you can see, if you compare the colors, milk chocolate is going to be a lighter shade of brown, obviously because it's going to contain milk solids. Okay, It also contains sugar, vanilla. It's the best chocolate in the United States. People love their milk chocolate. Okay, You do not want to substitute milk chocolate for any other recipe calling for dark chocolate and the reason why is because the milk chop the milk in the milk chocolate is going to cause it to burn so you need to melt the milk chocolate very slowly to avoid any type of burning so meaning you just have to keep an eye on it uh, the next type of chocolate is right here chocolate chips this comes in a va a variety of different types of chocolate most commonly semi-sweet and it comes in a variety of different 
um, sizes. And as you can see, this just looks more like a morsel, where up here, um, these are more like tablets like the Coverture. They come in all different shapes and forms. But your true chocolate chip is going to look like that little morsel that you're seeing on the screen. Next is our chocolate chunks. And this is just like a chocolate chip. However, it's in a chunk form. Um, they're usually not very uniform. And the reason people would want chocolate chunks is to make like a chocolate chunk, uh, chocolate chip cookie or add the chunks to brownies and it just gives you more of that luscious chocolate flavor um, and stays pretty whole as the baked product cooks. And then last but not least is the pistoles. Um, this is just a round piece of chocolate and it's great for tempering. Now to introduce you to the concept of tempering that's melting, okay? And again, this is very, the pistoles are a lot it's very glossy and they come in the tablet form. Again, this is not a type of chocolate you're going to find in the grocery store. Moving on, um, the next type of chocolate is white chocolate, which is an ivory color. It's the only one that's not brown. And the reason it's not brown is because it doesn't, it's not a true type of chocolate. It's a fake chocolate. Um, it's usually labeled an actual coating in the United States. Um, you can buy it in different forms by different brands, etc. It does have cocoa butter in it, but it doesn't have any chocolate solids, okay? It burns very easy, and the reason why is because it's fake. It doesn't have that naturalness like, like real chocolate does. So when you're melting your white chocolate, you usually want to add something like shortening or uh, the paraffin wax, and that's just going to help smooth it out and helps it uh, melt a little bit uh, easier, smoother. It, very similar, moving on to my next type of chocolate, which is the imitation chocolate. This um, right here is your, it's your almond bark, which is a very common imitation chocolate that we buy and use for Java Chino. It tastes just like chocolate. It looks like chocolate, but it's not. It has high amounts of hydrogenated oils, so it melts pretty easy, um, and, but it feels very waxy in your mouth. Okay, so if you, for our chocolate covered pretzels, it works great. Now, if we were going to go downtown and, you know, serve a, at a five star restaurant and you want to put, make chocolate covered strawberries, you're going to use a coverture type of chocolate rather than this, this almond cho fake chocolate that we would use here at school. It tastes good. It's just we're more on a budget. Moving on to our next concept. So how do you store this chocolate? Well, first off, Chocolate needs to be kept cool, a consistent temperature. You should never put it in the fridge or the freezer. That's going to cause what's known called bloom. And if you look at my picture right here, that is bloom, chocolate bloom. It's not a form of mold or anything like that. It's a discoloration and it's made, it's created when you um, store your chocolate at like under the sunlight or in a pantry that's got really warm above 70 degrees and then you brought the temperature down and cooled it, chocolate bloom is going to occur. The bloom also occurs, sometimes I'll see on the Javachino pretzels, we'll melt the chocolate, we'll, we'll dip our, our sticks, we'll put it on the rack, and then all of a sudden it has white streaks in it. That's the bloom. It's just because of improper melting methods, okay? So what ends up happening is the fat bloom occurs when the cocoa butter crystallizes crystals rise on the surface. So that's what you're actually seeing. It's just the, um, the crystallization, all right? Moving us in, bloom occurs when chocolate is improperly tempered. Um, tempering chocolate is a method for melting chocolate. And what it means is you're slowly raising and lowering the temperature of melted chocolate. Um, and you stir constantly until the chocolate is actually stabilized. Um, Correctly tempered or melted chocolate will dry very rapidly um, and it will be very glossy and have shininess to it. And when it, it will snap very clean and crisp, like what you're looking for with a good quality chocolate. Now, if you melt your chocolate improperly, that's when the bloom comes about or the texture of the chocolate's very cakey, it takes a long time to dry, it sticks inside molds, things like that. And this would be an example of the bloom on the chocolate covered pretzels that I was talking about. It was improperly melted, improperly cooled, and that's what ends up happening. It doesn't look very desirable to eat. It almost looks like mold growing on chocolate. Um, another caution you need to be aware of when you're melting chocolate or tempering chocolate is if chocolate gets even a drop of water 
it can become lumpy. The lumpiness is called seizing. If this happens, you can actually try to add some shortening or some of the paraffin wax and that will restore the chocolate and bring it back into its smooth texture that you're looking for. Another melting method or tempering method is called seeding. And what this means is you would melt two thirds of your chopped Kobocher chocolate in a, in a bowl, usually over a double boiler or in a microwave, and you would heat it just until it starts melting, okay? Constantly stirring, etc., keeping below 90 degrees. Then, once that chocolate, and the first two-thirds of chocolate is melted, you would add the remaining one-third, and you just keep stirring it until all the chocolate is melted, and that is known as seeding. I have a visual example to help you understand better. So, two-thirds of the chocolate was all melted. We had a pound of chocolate, two-thirds of it we melted here in the bowl, and then you add the remaining one-third of chocolate um, just to bring that chocolate lower the temperature and just help melt it all together. That technique is called seeding. You, as I can, said, you can also uh, temper or melt chocolate in the microwave. Um, you would put the, your chocolate in a microwave sieve, dry bowl, no water, or else it will cease, and you microwave um, on a medium setting for about 10 to 12 seconds, It will, and then you take it out, stir, put it back in, another 12, 13, 12 seconds, Take it out, stir until it starts to melt. Um, this could take a minute, it could take two minutes. It kind of just depends on your microwave. But you really want to make sure you're doing those short intervals of time because once chocolate it burns, it has a, it could burn like literally the third 12 seconds. So you got to kind of be careful with it. Also, make sure you're checking the temperature, keeping below 90 degrees. With your tempered chocolate, um, you're actually going to see some videos on these, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. You can create chocolate decorations, and here right on the side, um, you see they've put the chocolate in piping bags, and they're making decorations. Once those cool, you just put them up right on top of a dessert just to add a nice garnish enhancement to the dish. Um, you can also make chocolate leaves, which you'll see a video demonstration on, and you'll also be doing it when we do our chocolate lab. And then last but not least, you can make chocolate cigarettes. Those are actually, they're like chocolate rounds, like tubes almost, um, used to decorate cakes, ice cream sundaes, etc. And you'll also see a short demonstration on how to make the chocolate cigarettes, as well as you'll have the opportunity to make some chocolate cigarettes when we have our chocolate lab. Thank you.